How's everybody today? This is Pete here from Spawn Fly Fish and Josh, if you watched his video a couple weeks ago, talked about getting ready for what's up and coming and coho season is up and coming. So in the vise today, we've got an SA254 from A-Rex. This is a size four. For the bead, we've got the hot fluorescent pink football bead from Spawn. And this is a size 7.5 millimeter. And for some weighted wire to hold that position of the bead, I've got some non-lead .020. And we're gonna put about 10 wraps on, on this hook. Clip off the front there, I'll roll it, and then roll that edge with the inside curve of my scissor. And I'll do the same on the back. And just roll over that cut edge a little bit. And then from there, simply slide into the back of the bead. And what we're looking at here is the bulk or, or bigger portion of the bead being underneath the shank so that this guy rides hook point up all day long. All right, so for our thread, I got some Vivis 140. This is a little hot pink. And I'm pretty excited about coho season this year because last year, by the time I, I actually moved to Washington, the coho were pretty much done. So this will be my, my first full season fishing for these guys. And I am anxious to say the least. But for this, this is kind of a classic um, color combo of pink and purple. And we're hoping to rope in some, some fish on this fly. And because of that, this is named the coho lasso. So, got a nice thread base there, got a couple wraps over our weighted wire, and for the tail here, going pretty simple, and I've got some fuchsia mallard from Nature Spirit, and if you look here, I've taken the fibers and, and brushed them down toward the bottom of the feather, which leaves me that clean little tip, and that's gonna be my tie-in. So right off the back here, we're going with the inside of the feather facing the shank, like so, and a few wraps. I'm actually going to just tie this all the way up until I get behind those weighted wire wraps, and then I will trim out any of these fibers that need to be removed. And the reason I do this is if you wrap to behind those wires with each material that you add in, you're going to end up with a very even underbody when it's all said and done. All right, so for right now, let's leave this here. I'm going to gently coax these fibers all toward the back before I start to wrap. And now I can take my first pass and just be mindful. It's a little goofy there on that first one to get around the hook shank and not catch the hook point. And then from here, all I'm going to do is consciously be aware of where my quill is. And like, if you've seen me tie before, I don't, I don't really tie a lot on the side of the quill. When I can get it to lay flat, I prefer to use that flat inside portion on the concave side. And I just, just to me, it makes a, a little bit of a neater tail. And I do like that look. The fish don't seem to care. So don't worry about it because once it gets wet, all those fibers will slip back either way. All right, pull those fibers up. We've got a clean V right there, and that's what I'm gonna use for my thread wraps to secure the quill. And take three, four wraps up the quill, get it out of the way, a couple wraps in front, and then I will trim it out, like so. And Continue like that, and our tail is tied. And once we take this hook out of the vise, we can make sure everything is splayed around evenly. And that looks pretty good for right now. All right, for the rib on this guy, I'm going to use some purple frostbite as the rib. And so I'll tie this one in right behind those weighted wires. And get it all the way back there like so. 
And then for the body, I'm just using a little cactus chenille, and this is pink. And all I'm going to do is remove some fibers off the end of that, and now the core is exposed. So this will make it a lot easier for me to tie this in without bulking up right away. So now you can see that core is tied down. I don't have a lot of trapped fibers. And now I can continue all the way to those last wraps and securely wrap all the way to behind the bead like so. And from here, nothing crazy. All we're gonna do is wrap this chenille. If there's one little trick here, and when you're using wire or anything like that, this, this would apply as well. Pull your rib material toward the front and take one pass of your body material behind that rib and then get the rib be, you know, toward the back again. So now you'll see, now I've got my rib trapped here. So when I start to wrap this, there's no way for it to slip off and come and put an extra wrap behind it and it's not gonna slip forward. It's just gonna stay there until we're ready for it. And gently coax these fibers back toward the rear of the hook as you wrap the chenille forward. And we're gonna go pretty close to right behind the bead and I know it might look like we're going to run out of room. So we do have another element to add in up there, but believe it or not, there's, there's room. So there's two and three securing thread wraps. I'll pull all that back and get a couple thread wraps right in front before I trim that out. So now let's pop that out. And these little fibers here will get mashed down, so don't, don't fret about them too much. All right, so now, We'll take that rib that we strategically put in there and we're just going to wiggle this through and get a little bit of a segmentation going. Nothing crazy, just a little bit to break up that monotony and give the fish another contrast point to look at as this is moving through the water. All right, and right up there behind the bead and we'll secure it with a few thread wraps and and a couple in front of it. Make sure the sucker's not going anywhere. And neatly trim that out. All right, so it's looking pretty buggy already. And, you know, with coho, they do love pink in the fresh water. Once they hit fresh water, that, that pink really comes into play. And so now, just to break up the pattern, add a little purple in there. So we've got purple. Uh, this is the steelhead purple mallard flank from Nature Spirit as well. And so we're just brushing or coaxing those fibers back toward the bottom of the feather and then even it up on the tips. Make a nice clean separation point and that's your tie-in. And again, that feather will be facing the concave or inside of the feather toward the hook shank. So there's four or five th thread wraps, secure that feather in, and trim out the tag end there. And now we just need a couple wraps of, oop, so now this is good. So I didn't securely tie that feather down and it pulled right out of those, those thread wraps. So now I'm gonna undo exactly six, three, four, five, six, and six. So now we're back to where we started Trim out a couple extra feathers on the tip there and tie it right back in. If there were a time for you to have a little freak out moment, that may have been it, but not worth it. Just undo, reposition, tie it back in. And now we'll add a couple, little bit more pressure right there. Make sure that doesn't pop out again. Trim that tip again. And now bring that feather up, start coaxing those fibers toward the back, just like we did with the tail. And you'll see my fibers are gonna cover the body and reach halfway to the back of that tail. That's just about perfect. And then same thing here. I'm gonna to wanna to try to, to tell this feather that I want to wrap on the inside or flat portion of the concave section of that quill. And if it does, great. And if it doesn't, it's okay because this is a collar. And again, it's all gonna get wetted down and all flow toward the back of that hook. And I'm gonna 
create my V right there. Get some thread in between. Now I can kind of see those fibers that I want to stay in, and I can see the ones I don't want to stay in, and we'll use that as our separation right there. So now the quill has been secured on the front of it as well. Just trim that out. Brush any of these fibers back. Any little cleanup work you need to do, this is the time. And build a nice little thread collar here, and we're ready for a couple whip finishes. And this fly is meant to get into the pockets where these fish are holding. So this will get in there very quickly. Once it hits the bottom or gets into the, the depth you want it, just start stripping a little bit, get a little action, and hold on tight. Okay, so there's two whip finishes. Trim that out of there. And we will put some cement on this guy and it'll be ready to rock. As far as being prepared for the season, I don't know that I could ever tie enough of them to feel ready. But at least I'm starting a little bit early and it'll be here before you know it. So if you're into the coho scene, I'd start tying some bugs up pretty quick here. So for the cement, I've got some Loon Hardhead. This is clear. I just want to get a nice even coat around all those thread wraps. I've got a little, little bit of trimming to do there to clean up right where those fibers are sticking out, but I'm not going to cry about it too much. All right, so there we have it, folks. The Coho Lasso, pink, purple, and oh so delicious. And just for your viewing pleasure, let's take, I've got one tied already, and I'm going to dunk it in some water for you. And then you can see what this looks like in action. So let me get this out of the vise. And I'm going to put the wetted version in the vise for you. And there you have it. Nothing crazy. Pretty simple fly. Pink, purple. Gets your attention. And it gets eaten. So I hope you guys tie up a bunch of these. Get out on the water. Have some fun with these, with these salmonids. And if you enjoy this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe. And we will see you on the water.